The life in the hereafter. What does the Quran say? Translation of Jahan e Fada by Jaz Rasul. Ghulam Ahmad, Parwez, 1969. 10 Punishment. Azab. In both this life and the hereafter. After mentioning the consequences of the worldly life. We should have gone on next to discuss the life of the hereafter. But there are such verses in the Quran in which the consequences of deeds in both this life and in the life of the hereafter are cited. In this connection, this much explanation is necessary, that the Quran gives great significance to this life. As noted before, and says we must take full advantage of the natural resources and material goods in this world. Along with this, the Quran states that when there is a conflict between a worldly benefit and a permanent value, and between them only one can remain, then at that juncture the permanent value must take precedence. This is called the benefit of the hereafter, in other words, sacrificing the immediate benefits in order to achieve future benefits instead. This life of the future, hereafter, will be discussed in the chapters to follow. At this point keep in mind the Quranic meaning of the two terms. Dunya and Akhirat, this world and the hereafter. And note the relevant verses. 10.1 Desiring, Dunya, and Akhirat, wishing for the benefits of both lives. As noted earlier in this regard, according to the Quran the true purpose of human life should be to attain the successes and pleasantries of this life by being in harmony with the permanent values, and the life of the hereafter should also be lofty and pleasant. To re-emphasize this point, in Surah Al-Imran the Quran says regarding those groups who rise up in support of truth, and Allah gave them a reward in this world, and the excellent reward of the hereafter. For Allah loves those who do righteous deeds. 3. 148. In Surah Araf the following prayer is noted in relation to Moses. And ordain for us that which is good, in this life and in the hereafter. For we have turned unto you. 7. 156. In Surah Ibrahim, the Quran declares that these righteous people have concrete results in this life as well as the next. Allah will establish in strength those who believe with the word that stands firm in this world and in the hereafter. 14. 27. In Surah Namal, the opponents question the Mominin, what will you get by following this Quran given to you by your Allah? In response Allah states, to the righteous it is said, what is it that your Rab has revealed? They say, all that is good. To those who do good, there is good in this world, and the home of the hereafter is even better, and excellent indeed is the home of the righteous. 16. 30. A little later the Quran says about the Mahajirin, emigrants, that they will not only have a goodly life in this world, but the reward of the hereafter will be multiplied for them. 16. 41. Allah has called the Mominin, friends, and characterized them as follows. For them are glad tidings, in the life of the present and in the hereafter. No change can there be in the words of Allah. This is indeed the supreme felicity. 10. 64. Their life will be as follows. Therein you will have all that yourself shall desire. Therein you will have all that you ask for. 41. 31. See also. 22. 15. Since the messengers of Allah were leaders of the Mominin, therefore this life of theirs was highly successful. For example, regarding Abraham, the Quran says, Him we chose and rendered pure in this world, and he will be in the hereafter in the ranks of the righteous. 2. 130. What was this highly successful life in this world? To explain this, the Quran declares. But we had already given the followers of Abraham the book and wisdom and conferred upon them a great kingdom. 4. 54. See also. 16. 122. 29. 27. 
so much so that the Quran denies what is quoted in the Bible regarding the life of the Messenger Isa. Jesus, that he, Allah forbid, lived a life of helplessness and humiliation. His followers with great pride present a picture of him to the world in which he is depicted as living the life of a beggar and in the last moments of his life. Jewish and Roman soldiers treated him with extreme humiliation. The Quran categorically refutes this and states, His name will be Isa, Jesus, the son of Mary, held in honor in this world and the hereafter and of the company of those nearest to Allah. 3. 45. To benefit for the necessities of this life is very important according to the Quran. To those who have a capitalist mentality, and in pursuit of the accumulation of wealth, do not even spend on their own selves, it says you have ruined your hereafter you unfortunate people, at least you should live comfortably in the present life. But seek with the wealth which Allah has bestowed on you the home of the hereafter, nor forget your portion in this world. But do you good, as Allah has been good to you, and seek not occasions for mischief in the land. 29, 77. 10.2 to desire benefits only of this life. Then there are those people whose only aim in life is desiring the pleasures of this life and in the pursuit of this aim they completely disregard the permanent values. About them the Quran says, These are the people who buy the life of this world at the price of the hereafter. Their penalty shall not be lightened nor shall they be helped. 2. 86. See also. 4. 74. In other verses the Quran states that these people prefer this life over the next life and as a consequence all their efforts in this life are wasted. Those who love the life of this world more than the hereafter who hinder men from the path of Allah and seek therein something crooked, they are astray by a long distance. 14. 3. See also. 16. 107, 79, 38, 87, 16 to 17. In Surah Kaf, it states that all their endeavors in the pursuit of worldly benefits are wasted. 18, 103 to 104. As has been mentioned before, in return for their efforts and endeavors in this life, they obtain the means of sustenance, but they have no share in the life the future. C. 2, 103, 3, 77, 10, 7, in Surah Hud. Those who desire the life of the present and its glitter, to them we shall pay. The price of, the deeds therein, without diminution. They are those for whom there is nothing in the hereafter but the fire. Vain are the designs they frame therein, and of no effect will be the deeds that they do. 11. 15 to 16, see also, 42, 20. In Surah Arkaf it is noted that these people will say in the hereafter, why don't we get a share in these benefits? In reply they will be told, it is because the aim of all your endeavors was declared to be for the gain of worldly benefits only, and you got them. This way the reward of your efforts ended there, and now there is nothing left from this, so what can you be given? You got all of your share there. What do you want now? And on the day that the unbelievers will be placed before the fire, consequences of the deeds, it will be said to them, you received your good things in the life of the world, and you took your pleasure out of them. But today shall you be recompensed with a penalty of humiliation, for that you were arrogant on earth without just cause, and that you transgressed. 46, 20, see also, 53, 29, the doors of worldly benefits were opened for both the Momenin and non-Muslims. In the worldly life, both groups obtained the benefits in proportion to their endeavors. For the life of the hereafter, benefits are only available to those who in the worldly life keep in mind the benefits of the hereafter. 7. 32, 18, 46. 
You used to be told there, why do you ask for the short-term benefits of this life only? From Allah both the worldly benefits and those of the hereafter can be obtained. Why do you not labor for both these benefits? You used to be informed very plainly that there are great attractions in the glitter and glamour of the present life. And whereas you should certainly make an effort for these, do not forget this truth, that the life of the hereafter is far more valuable and you should desire and work for this also. Fair in the eyes of men is the love of things they covet. Women and sons, heaped up hordes of gold and silver, horses branded, and, wealth of, cattle and well-tilled land, such are the possessions of this world's life but in nearness to Allah is the best of the goals. 3. 14. While pursuing the necessities of this life along with desiring the hereafter. This means that if ever there is a clash between a worldly advantage and a permanent value, you should give up the former by saying that its advantage means nothing compared to the life of the hereafter. At this time you should state as per the Quran, what is the life of this world but amusement and play? But, verily the home in the hereafter, that is life indeed, if they but knew. 29. 64. The comparison of these two modes of life is like rain which gives life to a dry land for a short period and then the land becomes dead again. 10. 24. 57. 20. To illustrate this same comparison. It is said in the Battle of Uhad, that the material left behind by the retreating party held great attraction, when duty demanded that the place of responsibility in the battle should not be given up. The former was a worldly advantage while the latter was the benefit of the hereafter. So among you some were attracted by the material gains and did not do the duty, ignoring it and their responsibility, and left their position. Three. 151. Otherwise, in normal circumstances, not only is there permission to obtain worldly benefits, but to make an effort for these is the responsibility of the momenin. And when the congregation for Salat is finished, then you disperse through the land, and seek of the bounty of Allah. 62. 10. 10.3. Azab punishment both in this life and the hereafter. Now we look at the third group, about whom the Quran states that they live a life of ignominy both in this world as well as the next life. A group among these people is one which never even pays any heed to subjugating and utilizing the forces of nature. As a result they live a life of misery, poverty, deprivation, helplessness, slavery, bondage and subjugation. This group generally belongs to deeply religious people, who are deluded into believing that one should shun all material benefits in this life, as staying away from these is what those who are closer to Allah do. They believe this life is for non-believers and the next life is the one for believers. Another group among these people consists of those nations which after attaining ascendancy, fall into a state of humiliation and as a result live a life of subjugation and slavery. Both these groups live a life of azab or hell in this life and if they do not try to change their state, their life in the hereafter will also be hell. In Surah Taha it is stated, but whosoever turns away from my message, verily for him is a life narrowed down, and we shall raise him up blind on the day of judgment. 20. 124. In another verse. But those who were blind in this world will be blind in the hereafter, and most astray from the path. 17. 72. The hereafter is only adorned for him who made an effort to put things right in this world. The one who did not try to improve his current life, how can his life in the hereafter be pleasant and prosperous? The way in which punishments come in this life needs detailed explanation. However, the Quran has put it in a nutshell in two words I. E. Fear and hunger. So Allah made a taste of hunger and fear like a garment. From every side, because of the evil, which its people, 
Wart. 16. 112. You can see how the Quran has summed up Azab in this life by these two words. The punishment in the life of the hereafter will be explained in more detail at a later point. At this stage it is enough to note that those people who will be in a state of punishment in this life. In the hereafter their lives will also be in hell, and this is according to the law of requital. In Surah al-Baqarah it states about the people who transgress. But what is the reward for those among you who behave? Like this but disgrace in this life. 2. 85. See also. 2. 114. 5. 41. 22. 9. 39. 26. In Surah Kham, after narrating the destructive consequences of an erroneous economic system, the Quran declares. Such is the punishment, in this life. But greater is the punishment in the hereafter, if only they knew. 68. 33. In Surah Maida it is stated that the opponents of the Islamic system will be punished in this life as well as in the hereafter. The punishment of those who wage war against Allah and his messenger, and strive with might and main for mischief through the land is execution or crucifixion, or the cutting off of hands and feet from opposite sides, or exile from the land. That is their disgrace in this world, and a heavy punishment is theirs in the hereafter. 5. 33. See also. 24. 19. 24. 23. In the clash between truth and evil, when the opponents of Hak truth are defeated by the Momineen, the Quran calls this azab e dunya or punishment in this life. After this, these opponents will also receive word of the punishment in the hereafter. For example, in Surah Tawbah, in connection with the orders given to fight the opponents of Islam, these opponents the non-believers and hypocrites of the Arab society of the time are warned that they should desist from fighting against the Momineen as this will be better for them otherwise. If they repent, it will be best for them. But if they turn back to their evil ways, Allah will punish them with a grievous penalty in this life and in the hereafter. They shall have none on earth to protect and help them. 9. 74. Regarding them it is said that they will be punished twice, and then they will return for the severest punishment. 9. 101. In Surah Rarad it is noted that their plans will be worthless and they will be punished in this life and the punishment of the next life will be far worse still. 13. 34. In Surah Kaf it states that Zulkanan told the opposing nation that if they did not stop doing wrong to others, then he will punish them and when they will go to Allah they will be given a severe punishment. 18. 87. In Surah Azad there is a warning to those who create difficulties for the messenger and the Momineen. They will have a deprived life, here as well as in the hereafter. Those who create difficulties for Allah and his messenger, Allah has condemned them in this life and in the hereafter, and has prepared for them a humiliating punishment. 33. 57. See also. 39. 26. When the Jews residing in Medina broke their covenant, a decision was made to extradite them. In this regard, the Quran has stated that if this decision to extradite them had not been made, they would have been subject to punishment. And had it not been that Allah had decreed banishment for them, he would certainly have punished them in this world. And in the hereafter they shall have the punishment of the fire. 59. 3. In another verse it is stated as a principle that those people who oppose truth and do not have iman in the law of requital. Such are they for whom there is a grievous penalty. And in the hereafter theirs will be the greatest loss. 27. 5. In Surah Sajja. And indeed we will make them taste of the penalty of this. Life. Prior to the supreme penalty, in order that they may return. 32, 21. 
This approaching punishment either means that before the final destruction they will suffer minor shocks, so that they can learn their lesson and mend their ways, or that the supreme punishment is the punishment of the hereafter. There can be two aspects of this punishment. Minor punishments prior to an ultimate one, to provide warning or as translated here punishment in this life and then the final one in the next life. This is also called punishment piled upon punishment. 16. 88. Regarding the people who get punishment of the deeds in this life as well as in the next life, the Quran states, They are those whose works will bear no fruit in this world and in the hereafter nor will they have anyone to help. 3. 22. Contrary to this, the people who follow the righteous path will have a worldly life of paradise here as well as in the hereafter. This reality is noted in the following two verses of Surah Futter. In this Surah, the last confrontations with the opponents from within the Quraysh are referred to that he may admit the men and women who have Iman, to gardens beneath which rivers flow, to dwell therein for I, and remove their ills from them. And that is, in the sight of Allah, the highest achievement. 48. 5. It is apparent that this life of paradise had started during this worldly life. Contrary to this, regarding the non-believers it is said, and that he may punish the hypocrites, men and women, and the polytheists, men and women, who imagine an evil opinion of Allah. On them is a round of evil. The wrath of Allah is on them. He has condemned them and got hell. Ready for them. And evil is it for a destination. 48. 6. 10.4 Protection and punishment according to his will. Before ending this chapter, attention needs to be drawn to a very important point. In some of the verses of the Quran it is stated, Yakfira Lamenian Shah wa Yuatsibo Manyan Shah, these verses are usually translated as Allah punishes whoever he wishes and forgives whoever he wishes. This interpretation means that with regard to him, reward and punishment, hell and forgiveness, for these there is no procedure set, no law, principle or standard established. All these are dependent on his will. He will punish whoever he wishes and set free whoever he wishes. This aspect is related to the doctrine of destiny which is not included in the current topic covered in this book. However, suffice it to say that this interpretation of the verses is totally against the teaching of the Quran, which revolves around the law of requital. 45. 22. Therefore, the term manyanshah used in these verses can by no means have the implications that hell and forgiveness are solely dependent on Allah's will. The correct meaning of such verses is that Allah has established laws and principles for hell and forgiveness protection from destruction, so that whoever wishes he can disregard these and purchase destruction for himself, and whoever wishes to gain protection, can safeguard himself by following them. However, if anyone insists that in these verses Manyanshah relates to Allah's will, then even in that case we can say that these verses have the meaning that hell and forgiveness are related to Allah's law of his will I. E. What we sow, so shall we reap. The Quran has also made this aspect clear in some of its verses, that the law of his will is another name for the law of requital. For example, in Surah Maida, the Jews and Christians claim they are the preferred children of Allah. Regarding this, ask them if you are such favorite children of Allah. Both, the Jews and the Christians say, We are sons of Allah and his beloved. Say, why then does he punish you for your crimes? 5. 18. After this the Quran using the same expression states, Nay, you are but men, of the men he has created. He forgives and punishes as per his will, his law. Yakfira Lamenian Shah wa Yuatsibo Manyan Shah. 5. 18. Now it is obvious that if the meaning of this verse is that he gives punishment where he pleases, 
then why does the first part of the verse say, Yo azabokum be zanabekum, meaning, he gives you punishment in return for your crimes. Both the verses will be contradictory, therefore this meaning of the verse is incorrect. I. E. That he gives punishment where he pleases. In this regard the verse in Surah Nisa is very decisive. What can Allah gain by your punishment, if you are grateful and you have Iman? Nay, it is Allah that recognizes all good, and knows all things. 4. 147. To date all that has been written so far has made clear that. 1. The state of individuals or nations is dependent on the results of their own deeds. Until a nation changes its own state, Allah will not help it change its state. 8. 53, 13, 11. Dot. 2. The results of human deeds manifest both in this life and that of the hereafter. The life of paradise and hell starts from this life itself and accompanies us till after we die. We have seen the manifestation of results in the worldly life. Now we move on to the life in the hereafter.